Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to talk about the plant growth stages in soybeans. Soybeans are dramatically different than corn and wheat because corn and wheat are grass crops, soybeans are a broadleaf crop. When you have a broadleaf crop like soybeans, it's really interesting because actually the seed comes up out of the ground. And a lot of people say, well, what are you talking about? You put the seed <laughs> in the ground, now a plant's going to come up. No, actually the two halves of the soybean seed are the first thing you're going to see coming out of the ground. Yep, and what those are called are the cotyledon leaves. So they're thick leaves with a waxy coat, and that's the original seed. So that seed splits in two, becomes the cotyledon leaves very early in the season. Well, you say they're kind of fat leaves, and, and they are. And when you think about a soybean seed, it is very nutrient dense. Yep. And really, when that soybean plant first gets started, the two halves of the seed are going to feed that plant quite a bit. There's a lot of nutrition there to help that plant get going as that tiny little tap root system gets started. Now when we talk about corn, there's a pretty extensive root system that develops. With soybeans, it's much less of a root system than it is with corn, so it's important that we protect those roots and also to encourage other things in the soil to help those roots out. Well, those roots do seem to be a lot more simple than the corn plant because that soybean root just is a nice tap root going down with root hairs coming out. But the thing is, the soybean root does excrete a lot of sugars or carbohydrates that will feed bacteria in the soil. Those bacteria will then colonize, and if they get the right bacteria, the rhizobia bacteria, they will colonize and actually pull nitrogen out of the air and turn it into a form that the soybean plant can use. So as farmers, it's a great deal. We don't have to fertilize with nitrogen for our soybeans much because the soybeans can pull it right out of the air. Well, you said much there, and I think that's yeah. kind of key when we're talking about nutrition today. The soybean still does need a little bit of supplemental nitrogen, but it's not a huge amount like in corn or wheat, for example. Okay, so we've got those cotyledon leaves, the two halves of the seed. That's the first really leaves that you'll see above ground. The next leaves that come out are called unifoliate leaves. There's a single leaf that comes out on each side of the stem exactly opposite each other. That's the last time we're going to see single leaves forming on our soybeans. After that, all the leaves that are going to come out are called trifoliate leaves. So there will be one branch connected to the main stem, but then it will turn into three different leaves there. And you'll have a number of trifoliates as that plant continues to grow. One thing we should mention with these trifoliate leaves is the growing points on a soybean plant. Now when the cotyledons first come out, there's a growing point at each cotyledon, there's a growing point at each unifoliate leaf, and then there's a growing point at each trifoliate foliate as we're going. And then there's going to be some more that haven't quite opened up yet at the top of the plant. So Until going to be we a, get to late in the season. So there's going to be a number of growing points there. And this is why it's important for farmers. You say, well, what difference does it make to understand these growing stages and where all these growing points are? The important thing is, let's just say you have to use a really harsh herbicide out there. Or let's just say you're going to be putting a whole bunch of fertilizer on and you may have some burn on the leaves or something like that. You've got to be careful with broadleaf crops like soybeans because all the growing points are above ground. If you have a harsh weather uh, like event, hail for example or you're applying a harsh herbicide that may burn some leaf tissue off or something trying to kill some tough weeds yeah don't worry about you the could, herbicide thing at all we're not going to kill the whole plant you have to be cautious no with your soybean but the plants hail is that the hail at this time of the year is a huge issue you cut that off below the cotyledon leaves and that plant is dead it's a lot different with the corn plant where the growing point might still be below all ground. right brian you seem excited today let's talk about determinate plants and indeterminate <laughs> right. plants so there's two really different kinds of soybeans out well this determinate indeterminate thing is a big deal for farmers. Here in the northern United States, we have a short growing season. So with these soybean plants that are called indeterminate, they can actually be putting all these leaves on the leaf stages we just talked about. And at the same time, they can be into the reproductive stages where they get flowers and they put pods on and then they have the seed. And it really is triggered by the shortening of the day. So once the day length starts to get shorter, the soybean plant realizes, hey, I only have so much time to try and make seed. I better start making seed even though I'm still growing. In the southern United States, what we find there is determinant soybeans, and in that case, all the leaf stages will happen, and then all the reproductive stages. So after all the leaf stages happen, then there will be flowers and pods and seeds. And if you're familiar with soybean varieties, this happens at group five. Group double zero through group four is what's planted in the northern half of the country. And then the southern half of the country, typically starting around the Boot Hill of Missouri and further south, they'll have determinate varieties that are group five and later. And those particular beans will do all their growing first, 
then do all their reproductive stages. Well, once again, soybeans are a lot different crop than any of the grass crops like corn or wheat. They are a broadleaf crop, and it's kind of interesting how they uh, grow and develop, especially when you compare the southern United States soybeans with the northern United States soybeans. Ah, but broadleaf plants are very tough to control because they have multiple growing points. One of those broadleaf plants is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify it? 